Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to talk about red cell morphology and we're going to start with talking about iron deficiency anemia. Yeah. Iron deficiency, one of the most common, uh, the micro hypo um, anemias. Uh, so a valuable thing. We see it a lot. Uh, people you know, iron deficiency just because of their general poor diet. And then sometimes it's a consequence of different disorders, um, different, different diseases. So we see iron deficiency a lot in a heme lab. It's a good thing mm -hmm. to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And just, I think briefly before we go into actually looking at the morphology is just talking about why the cells are microcytic hypochrome. Yeah, probably a good thing to talk about. <laughs> So what, why are they like that? What makes them micro hypo? Just because, no. Uh, so basically uh, the reason why they're microcytic is because you lack iron. So remember iron is the major component of hemoglobin that's carrying oxygen. So hemoglobin is your globin chains, there's four, and each globin chain has a heme molecule inside of it, which is a protoporphyrin ring with iron in the center. Without that iron, you're not making hemoglobin. So when you lack hemoglobin, this, the red cells will go through increased cellular divisions. So they divide more frequently. And the reason is they need to hit a minimum amount of hemoglobin in their cells. So they have a minimum threshold that they have to hit. So they're going to keep dividing until they hit that minimum threshold. So they're microcytic because they had to go through increased cellular divisions and they're hypochromic because they're hitting only the bare minimum threshold of the amount of hemoglobin. That checks out. That's <laughs> yep. Um, and and so you know, uh, one of the things that I'm looking for, the thing I think that stands out most to my eye, like when I see the pattern, is the hypochromia. And I'm looking at the central pallor of some of the red cells, and we see hey, they have a huge central pallor, right? Oops, sorry, that was me. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all good. We all bump the scope, don't we? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so a normal red cell central pallor is approximately one third the volume of the cell. Yes. And, um, we can see here many of these cells yeah. far more. There's, there's a number of them like this guy here, right? So he's, he's got about one third, the central pallor of the entire cell is, you know, one third of the cell is central pallor, which, which is normal. But then if you look at some of the other cells, they have increased central pallor. So, you know, not that guy. I pointed out the wrong guy. This one's got a little bit more central pallor. This one's got a little bit more. This guy's got a little bit more. This guy's, well, he's a little bit bigger, but he's also got a little bit more. This one's got a little bit more. Over here, there's some good ones. So increased central pallor is more than one third. And then... Uh, if we have the luxury of a CBC analyzer to go along with our smear, <laughs> there's one red cell indice that will be particularly affected by that, right? And that, that's our MCHC. Mm -hmm. um, so the MCHC is representing the hemoglobin concentration in each cell. And also the MCH will be affected. That's representing the amount of hemoglobin per cell, right? So MCHC more concerned with the concentration of hemoglobin. I like that one. That one in my mind linked most directly with hypochromia as we, as we talk about it. But then, you know, um, MCH uh, is just the raw, the expected amount of hemoglobin for a normal red cell. These are smaller red cells and they're decreased in concentration. So MCH will be low as well. Um, just a little rant tangent, I guess. Uh, While well, you're hitting on indices, MCV also. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, you know, we said they were microcytic, right? And um, on the slide, one of the ways that we can kind of look for a microcytosis is comparing to a resting lymphocytes nucleus. So smaller, significantly smaller than a red cell, uh, excuse me, a lymphocyte nucleus will kind of represent a microcytosis. And then of course, with the benefit of the CBC indices, the MCV will be out of range. I'm thinking sub 80, right? So below 80, we're seeing microcytosis. <clears throat> I think- what And then we have other morphs too, right? Yes, yeah, we do have other morph. And one of the things with the other morph is it's really non-distinct. 
there's nothing that says like there's not a outside of micro hypo there's not a morphology that says i'm an ida and the okay. reason the really the reason you get these extra shapes and and things is because the red cells are more pliable they're easier to manipulate because there's less concentration in them so during the smearing process we're actually making the shapes typically yep Yep, this regular stressors on the cell will cause more deformability. I kind of think of it as like a, I always think of these as like water balloons, sort yeah. of. <laughs> and if I if I don't inflate the water balloon as much, well, actually water balloons are probably a poor example because they have that so much tension, right? But if we had like a plastic bag <laughs> full of liquid, if there's less liquid in it, I can, I can you know, when stresses are put on it, I can get these weird shapes. I can get these elongated ovalocytes and, and things like that, that we see uh, here in the field. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, what else can we say about our deficiency? Mm, I think that's good. No, I think we can start talking about them more. Yeah. All right, so what do we see? Mm. So definitely ovalis, I see ovalocytes, right? Yes. So when we talk about ovalocytes, the we have to talk about elliptocytes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're, bro they're brothers, sort of, right? <laughs> ovalocytes kind of have these more rounded edges to them, versus elliptocytes yeah. have more of these parallel edges to them, right? So sometimes elliptocytes are called cigar cells, or you know, Mike and Ike's those candies, and then. <laughs> the ovalocytes are a little bit more rounded. They don't have those parallel edges. Some institutions lump them together under one and some separate them. So that's why we had to talk about both. Mm -hmm. So then as we leave this here, you can see like this guy here has those rounded edges. Mm -hmm. He's an ovalocyte. And then right next to him, you have an elliptocyte. How convenient. <laughs> they lined up next to each other for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely see some elliptocytes here too, huh? Yeah. Yep. So there's both ovalo and elliptos here. I think one of the things is somebody might look at this slide and think, wow, when I look at this, like this cell here looks macrocytic mm -hmm. and this cell here looks macrocytic in comparison really? to the rest of the cells. That's right. That's right. That's why size becomes, size is kind of tricky uh, to assess because everything is relative to one another. It's hard to keep in frame. I mean, even experienced people like ourselves, it's really hard to keep in mind exactly what a hundred X field, you know, this cell, how big it should be. That's, you know, so um, really you're always in this frame of mind of comparing. And yeah, something that looks large might just be a normal MCV. And yeah. if it's just in a sea of small red cells. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's it outside of the microsites here. And then of course there's a, a platelet sitting on top of this red cell over here too. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. so we talked about this in one of our other videos. We should bring it up every time we see it. And so this is a good opportunity um, to kind of talk about uh, that that's not an inclusion. Yeah. And this one's a little easier because it's kind of sitting yeah. Like he's hanging off the side of it, right? But that, that white halo to letting you know that this is something external pushing on the membrane. And then uh, just for completeness, we should mention this is a neutrophil. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Good old neutrophil, buddy. Let me move field, change fields here. We'll, sure. We'll hop over adjacent. Hey. And so here's a good example, right? So we talked about the lymph resting lymph nucleus being approximately the size of a red cell. And yeah, these are really microcytic. And then I see maybe a red cell in, in the top left-hand corner of this, this frame that's like getting close to the size of the lymph. Yeah, right, right. So like he looks big, but um, compared to the lymph, maybe that's just more of a normal or normal size cell. Exactly. And the rest of them are just small in comparison. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So he, if you just hug him alone, you'd think he might be macrocytic. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so we've got that. And then again, there's mostly 
ovalo sites and mm -hmm. oh we have a schistocyte we do have a schistocyte yep yep cool so um you want to tell us what a schistocyte is so yeah schistocytes are um basically uh fragments of uh of a, of a healthy red cell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do see schistocytes on occasion mixed in, in iron deficiency. Um, I'm kind of a little bit uh, unclear as to why we see schistocytes. It could just be the, uh, like the ineffective erythropoiesis, um, but it's common. And then I think I see even some teardrops on occasion or teardrop like yep. cells and then there's a teardrop right here mm -hmm. yep but both of these i don't think there's enough to call no very good good point right so qualitatively these individual cells are here but one wouldn't uh make the call right. um i tend to be a little more sensitive to schistocytes but um yeah but each institution will have their own list and rules of this is how you call schistocytes this is how you call all of your red cell morphology and so you would just follow that mm -hmm. so for us looking at this we'd probably call microcytosis hypochromia ovalocytes and elliptocytes and that's about it there is that rare schistocyte like we saw there are the rare teardrops in here or decryocytes but so far it's really just been the ovalos and the elliptos with them with the characteristic micro mm -hmm. Agreed. And then just again, we've got another platelet sitting mm -hmm. on top of red. So more elliptocytes, more avalocytes. Yep. Again, occasional teardrop, but and again, the elliptos, right? Yep. So there's a bunch of them in here. Again, the ovalos. And then, yeah, the so, teardrops. So there's a teardrop here. Mm -hmm. There's some really small red cells in this field. <laughs> yeah, this one was a really, 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 really <laughs> a good, good microcytosis. Yeah. yeah. I don't see any schistocytes. This one. Nothing's jumping out at me. No, no. Okay. And then for complete this, this is a neutrophil. Mm -hmm. And it's got a couple of vacuoles. You can see this got a vacuole here. It does. A vacuole here. Okay. And then this is another neutrophil. Mm Small platelet clump. Yeah. So here's a platelet clump right here. Little one. Oh, and I see uh, a codocyte seems to have ent uh, entered the chat. <laughs> kind of uh, I got below the. Yep. Yep. And then below the 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 clump of platelets. Um, yeah. yeah. That fella. This one jumped yeah, out so at me. Codocytes, teardrop cells. I mean, mm -hmm. target cells. Another teeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it looks like this cell down here might be a little polychromatophilic also. Yep. Yep. And we haven't seen a ton of polychromasia, right? Because you generally have a depressed reticulocytosis, polychromasia representing the stress reticulocytes typically. Yeah. Um, so if uh, a stress reticulocyte is the bone marrow's um, more aggressive response to pushing red cells out maybe perhaps before they would normally be pushed out just to uh, accommodate okay. so for just to come back to the morph and think about like codocytes again there's not enough to call polychrome there's not enough to call and platelet clumps i would really want to look around and see if there are platelet clumps consistently and yep. if there are then you can say they're present but if if they're not then you just ignore it because everyone can have the occasional platelet clump. Yep. Uh, you know, phlebotomy is, is, is not a perfect uh, process. Um, there is almost assuredly in every single sample where there's enough platelets, you'll, you'll, there will be some clumping, right? It's, 
Um, but this wouldn't be statistically significant. Nope. And then I think this is a schistocyte site over here. Mm. This little guy right mm -hmm. here. This little fragment, not a whole cell, but a piece of a cell. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can see anything. So yeah, with just the sites assessment, it's it's a bit about shape. So a bit about like where you saw maybe where there was like tearing, ripping, breakage, and a bit about size too, right? Like where um, it's going to be small enough. Yeah, we won't see any acanthocytes for comparison in this one, most likely. But that'll be the challenge: is comparing a schisto to an acantho and making mm -hmm. sure that you're not calling. Acanthos, which are still whole cells, they just have abnormal projections versus a uh, schistocyte, which is a true fragment or a piece. Yeah, good point. And there's another schistocyte right here. Mm -hmm. Fragment right next to this teardrop cell right here, the little decryo. Mm -hmm. So I still think there is not enough to call for schistos or any other morphology outside of the elliptos, the ovalos, the micros, the hypos. Mm -hmm. Right, because we're taking into account several fields, right? So you might have a single field of five, 10 fields evaluated that might hit the threshold, right, of how many to count. But it's not appropriate. You need to be thinking about the whole clinical picture. Um, so you, they would be averaged out amongst all the fields evaluated. Yeah. Yeah. It should be consistent. Maybe four out of five fields or nine out of 10 fields that you should see that morphology and if you're going to call it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, I mean, we're not seeing much else exciting here. I think we can end the IDA one here with just a quick summary of you're not going to see any really exciting morphology. And really, that's the key to it being IDA. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. All right. Well, Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.